Well, they say the intelligence gene is the hardest one to wipe out. It can pop up after three or four generations. But with Elma being a little shortchanged on the intellectual side, I think their kids will be just fine. Like with Wally and me. No matter how high they turned up his band, he could never get his grades down. But paired off with me, we've had absolutely average kids. Except, of course, for Elma here. Well, I think the computer's doing a terrific job. I'll bet you by the next century, there won't be a lick of difference between anybody in this earth. What would an egalitarian society look like? In Kurt Vonnegut's short story, we see the dystopian results of this kind of regime. The year was 2081, and everybody was finally equal. They weren't only equal before God and before the law. They were equal every which way. Nobody was smarter than anybody else. Nobody was better looking than anybody else. Nobody was stronger or quicker than anybody else. All of this equality was due to the 211th, 212th, and 213th amendments to the Constitution and to the unceasing vigilance of agents of the United States Handicapper General. This is the first paragraph of Harrison Bergeron. Robert Wright of AIER describes Vonnegut's short story in his latest essay. He says, the story's real relevance lay in how it reveals the impossibility of equity, of mandating equal outcomes for all. In Vonnegut's America of 2081, over 200 constitutional amendments have made strict equity the law of the land. Harrison, what is the first article of the new American Constitution? That all men are not created equal. It's the responsibility of the government to render them so. Indeed. Well, son, you are one of those men, and for all intents and purposes, I am the government. Diana Moon Glampers, the handicapper general, oversees the bureaucracy responsible for ensuring that no American is more beautiful, intelligent, or talented than any other by enforcing the wearing of masks, sandbags, brain zappers, and sundry other devices designed to reduce the capabilities of the more fortunate so that no one would feel like something the cat drug in. Hey, his sandbag fell off. Did you see that? Put a shoe off. I've never seen anyone without a handicap. He's happy. Look at him, he's freaking happy. He won't be when the committee sees this. While most Americans had somehow come to accept the new equity regime, seven-foot-tall teen genius Harrison Bergeron did not. To bring this Thor-like human down to the least common denominator required huge handicaps that chafed Harrison's body and brain. Imprisoned for plotting to overthrow the government, Harrison broke loose his chains, shed his handicaps, invaded a televised ballet, declared himself emperor, and commenced dancing with his empress, the ballerina who proved herself the bravest, strongest, and most beautiful of the bunch. In a world where everybody is meant to be equal, and everybody therefore has to be handicapped downwards, some people are still unable to be fully handicapped and all of their capacities reduced, such was Harrison Bergeron. In the film version, he's recruited by a secret society who are above the government and decide how everything will work in quite a technocratic fashion. I know, <laughs> it's all very puzzling for you. I'll try to explain as briefly as I can, as you know, since the Second Revolution, America has been striving to create a truly egalitarian society, a society of average people. Well, the problem is uh, that to run such a society requires certain high administrative functions that the average person is simply incapable of performing. You mean like senator or president? Oh, oh, good Lord, no. I mean, anyone with average intelligence or less could uh, handle those. No. But it's the people who supervise the economy, who run the railroads, the airlines, the communications, manufacturing. Uh, unfortunately, they can't be uh, average. Now, surprisingly, uh, there are very few of us in, in numbers. Uh, what is it, uh, under 3,000, something like that? Yeah. But you were brought here because we would like you to be one of us. Me? 
Our recruiting department has been tracking you for two years. Your intellectual gifts are quite considerable. You mean the head house? The chess? That was all some sort of a test? Of course. That's why we brought you here like this. This is a secret facility. The general public doesn't know where it's located or, or indeed that it exists. The idea of it being only possible to have true equality by fostering inequality might be a trifle difficult for them to grasp. The film points out many different aspects of what an egalitarian society might look like and how it might go wrong. To allow children here. We're not trying to build a super race. Yeah, well, you are a super race. And you are a hypocrite. The system is perfect, Harrison. Just sometimes the people who run it aren't. In order for everybody to be equal, there have to be some that are less or more equal than the others. And so this is an impossible thing. The security. I could arrange it. Yes, the perquisites of power, very egalitarian. Oh, is that what this is all about? The idea that I intervened to save Philippa's life over 20 years ago, is that the crime? No, the crime is sacrificing 300 million minds in the name of fairness and justice when you and your friends feel free to violate it any time it suits you. As Robert points out in his text, the story of Harrison Bergeron should remind Americans that individuals can never achieve equity if the state is powerful enough to enforce equality of outcomes. Like the pigs in Animal Farm, the enforcers will always remain more equal than the others. Robert writes, Just as the reader comes to suspect that Bergeron will successfully rule over America's handicapped herd of sheeple, handicapper General Glampers enters the studio with a 10-gauge shotgun, an unequalizer if there ever was one. Two simple pulls of the trigger and Harrison and his ballerina empress were dead before they hit the floor. Although the details differ, both the short story and the film depict Harrison coming to a tragic fate. Instead of sparking a revolution, things go back to normal. Robert explains, No revolution followed. Although they watched it all on television, Bergeron's old parents could not moments later even remember their son's televised murder, only recalling of the ballet program. That one was a doozy. Their stupidity reminds one of idiocracy, while Glamper's gun becomes a metaphor for the state's monopoly on the legitimate use of violence, as well as the qualified immunity protecting politicians and bureaucrats from even the deadliest consequences of their actions. These are dystopian depictions of an egalitarian society. Is it true that in an egalitarian society, the enforcers will always remain more equal than the others? Just because everyone's equal, maybe we can bring half of the people up rather than, than, than bring half of them down. The smarter people get, the more efficiently they produce. And the more efficiently they produce, the more people get left behind. And that pisses them off. Bingo. Revolution. That's why we have a Department of Economic Suppression. Oh, well, silly oh, that is the thing. That is the beauty and horror of this place. They've thought of everything. They've anticipated everything. It's like the whole future has been rewound and corrected. Wait a minute. Does that include us? Are we going to be corrected? Let's get out.